Hello, welcome back to Learn Physics. In today's topic, we are continuing with our gravitation exercise. In last video, we dealt question number uh, 15. Till question number 15 we finished, isn't it? So we are here today we are starting with question number 16 that is from page number 144. Okay, so continuation 16th one. Okay. Calculate the force of gravitation between the earth and the sun given that mass of earth 6 into 10 to the power 24 kilogram and of the sun 2 into 10 to the power 30 kilogram. The average distance between the two is 1.5 into 10 to the power 11 meter. So, here calculate the force of gravitation. Gravitational force we need to find out. For that what and all are given? Mass of earth is given as 6 into 10 to the power 24 kilogram. And sun, mass of sun is given as 2 into 10 to the power 30 kilogram and distance between the two is r that is mass uh, sun and earth is at a distance of 1.5 into 10 to the power 11 meter. So we need to find out the force of gravitation. How we can find out the force of gravitation that is equal to g into universal law of gravitation g into m1 m2 divided by r square. So what is the value of g 6.63 into 10 to the power 11 minus 11 into 6 into 10 to the power 24 into 2 into 10 to the power 30 divided by r square r square is 1.5 into 10 to the power 11 the whole square so that's one here we can write it as all the values numerals we are taking it together and powers are taking it together so it will be 6.63 into 10 to the power into 6 into 2 is 12 into 10 to the power here it is minus 11 and here it is 30 so it will become 90 so 30 minus 11 okay 30 minus 11 divided by 1.5 the whole square 15 square is 225 so it will be 2.25 into 10 to the power 22 10 to the power 11 the whole square is 10 to the power 22 so it will be 10 to the power 22 so now we are going to solve this 6.63 into 12 divided by 2.25 into 10 to the power this is 19 minus 22 so it is here it will be get it as 10 to the power minus 3 here while solving uh, 3.56 here say 24 plus 30 so 54 minus 20 here it will be 54 minus 11 so it will be 54 minus 11 we will get it as 43 minus 22 so we will get it as 19 into 10 to the power uh, so 19 we will get so that is 0 0.03 into 10 to the power 19 so 3 into 10 to the 0 0 3 into 10 to the power 19 new 10 like that we will get okay so calculation doesn't matter if you have you need that's unit so if it is very tedious calculation also if you are doing half of the calculation most of you will be getting only maybe half mark will be reduced otherwise in physics means we are identifying the formula substituting properly and the unit also that is very important in the case of physics so if that is clear fine for you okay so now 17th one a stone is allowed to fall from the top of a tower 100 meter high and at the same time another stone is projected vertically upwards from the ground with a velocity of 25 meter per second. Calculate when and where the two stones will meet. So how we can find out this? See a stone is allowed to fall from the top of a tower 100 meter high. So from tower is of height 100 meter and a stone is allowed to fall down first isn't it so here we are considering the downward motion while we are considering the downward motion a stone is allowed to fall 
it's falling down at that time what is the initial velocity yes initial velocity will be if we are dropping or if it is falling down the initial velocity will be equal to 0 then what will be the acceleration here it is equal to 9.8 meter per second square okay it is allowed to fall down now we are considering the upward motion and the stone is moving upward direction with the velocity velocity is given uh, as 25 meter per second so initial velocity is 25 meter per second what will be the acceleration here against the gravitation right so we are considering it as negative minus 9.8 meter per second square now we have one distance 100 meter so when and where these two stones will meet so i am considering a distance x from the top then this distance will be 100 minus x let x be the distance from the top where the two stones are meeting so when and where they will meet so we need to find out the time taken by the stone to reach this position isn't it and this we can find out x value so you will be getting the when and where so time also you should find out position also you should find out now we are considering let the two stones meet at a distance x from the top okay so so the distance covered is x i am considering here here distance covered will be 100 minus x okay so now we have u equals 0 a we have s we have so what will be yes s is equal to ut plus half a t square so here we can substitute x is equal to u is 0 so it is 0 half a is 9.8 into t square so we are getting it as 4.9 t square now if we are substituting the same over here s is equal to ut plus half a t square u is 25 t plus half into minus 9.8 t square that is equal to 100 minus x so i am writing it like this 100 minus x equals 25 t minus 4.9 t square but we already got it as 4.9 t square as x isn't it from the first equation x is equal to 4.9 t square so instead of 4.9 t square i can substitute it as x so 100 minus x equals 25 t minus x so minus x and minus x will get cancelled so you will get t as 100 divided by 25 that is equal to 4 seconds so at what time both will be meeting at x yes it will be meeting at s after 4 seconds now how we can find out the position see in any one of this equation we can substitute the t value and find out the position so x is equal to 4.9 into t square is 16 isn't it so we will get it as 49 into 16 how much it is 78.4 meters at a distance of 78.4 meter from the top we are uh, that's uh, fill this uh, the two stones will be meeting at a distance of 78.4 meters from the top or from the ground how much distance it is 100 minus 78.4 you you can find it and you will be getting the answer for that okay so it will be around the 21.6 isn't it so in that way we can find it. is it right next is 18th question a ball thrown up vertically returns to the thrower after six seconds so after six seconds it is reaching to the thrower the velocity with which it was thrown up the maximum height it reaches and the position after four seconds so first one is a ball is thrown vertically uh, up vertically returns to the thrower after th 6 seconds if it is taking 3 seconds to go up how much it will take to uh, uh, that's, that's totally it is 6 so how much will be taking it for uh, moving the upward direction in upward direction it will be taking a time of 3 seconds isn't it conditions are same 
so we can consider it as 3 second with which velocity it was thrown up so we need to find out the initial velocity final velocity what it will be it will be zero that's why it is coming down isn't it so now we have acceleration with us minus 9.8 meter per second since it is upward direction against the gravity so it is minus so what we can find out v how we can find out v u v equals u plus a t so it is 0 equals u minus 9.8 into 3 so u is equal to 28.4 meter per second clear so next is what is the maximum height it reaches how we can find out the maximum height how much distance it is traveling in the upward direction s is equal to ut plus half a t square or you can write down v square minus u square equals 2 as here calculation will be more easy so i am taking this one because we will go it as zero right that's the reason so minus u square u square is 28.4 the whole square equals 2 into minus 9.8 into s so minus 9.8 uh, and 28 minus and minus will get cancelled so s will be equal to 28.4 into 28.4 divided by 19.6 uh, so while we are solving this we will get the answer okay so it is 44.1 meters okay so this is the maximum height it is reaching position after 4 seconds after 4 seconds how much it is so max 3 seconds it is reaching up then in 1 second downward direction that one you should find out downward direction so what will be the downward direction initial velocity is 0 acceleration is 9.8 meter per second square it is downward direction a will be positive so in rest of the 1 second so after position only we need so yes we need to find out u t plus half a t square first term will be 0 since u is 0 half into 9.8 into 1 square so we will get it as 4.9 meters so that will be the distance traveled in downward direction in 1 second okay because 3 seconds it is reaching to the maximum and 1 second it is coming down okay to a distance of 4.9 meters clear now from page number 145 in page number 145 19th question in what direction does the buoyant force on an object immersed in a liquid act okay in what direction buoyant force will be acting it will be vertically down uh, upward direction buoyant force will be acting vertically upward direction see inside of uh, liquid inside of fluid if a particle is there if an object is there the object will be applying an upward force isn't it vertically upward direction that will be the direction of buoyant force okay next one why does a block of plastic released under water come up to the surface of surface surface of water see if i am taking taking a plastic and keeping it at the down and releasing my hand what will happen it will come up what is the reason because law of flotation because the buoyant forces the buoyant forces the buoyant force is greater than the weight of object greater than weight of object okay so that is the reason it is going upward direction because buoyant force is greater than the weight of object okay so now next one is 21st one this one we already discussed when we are doing the new this uh, theory part that's why i told it like that you know i guess because when the object will be sinking floating all those conditions we did okay the volume of 50 gram of substance is 20 centimeter cube and if the density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube will the substance float or sink see volume is given as 50 gram 
sorry mass is given as 50 gram and volume is given as 20 centimeter cube density of water is given 1 gram per centimeter cube so how we can find out whether it is uh, floating or this one uh, or sinking how we can we can find out the both the densities isn't it so if the density is more the which has more density that will sink okay so here density equals mass by volume that is 50 divided by 20 so we will get it as 2.5 gram per centimeter cube so which has more uh, 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 density density of object is more than the density of water so which will be sinking object will be sinking in water okay clear next one is 22nd one the volume of 500 gram sealed packet is 350 centimeter cube will the packet sink or float in water if the density is 1 gram per centimeter cube it's also same question like the previous one 22nd one mass is given as 500 gram volume is given as 350 centimeter cube so density of water is given as 1 gram per centimeter cube so density of packet we can find out first find out the density of packet so 500 divided by 350 so it is 0 0 will get cancelled 10 divided by 7 we will get as 350 so it is 1.4 gram per centimeter cube so which is having density of packet is greater than the density of water so it will sink okay clear so what will be the mass of water displaced by the packet that is archimedes principle so weight it will be equal to the weight of water displaced so mass of water displaced mass of water displaced will be equal to how we can find out the mass of water displaced mass of water density equals mass by volume okay if i am well, see mass of water displaced mass of water displaced means how much volume i kept inside that that much of volume will be displaced isn't it so here we can find out density of water into volume of water displaced how much of volume i will uh, this more object will be displacing what will be the volume of uh, the object the same volume will be displaced isn't it so density is one this volume is 350 so it is 350 gram of water will be displaced you understood this concept how we are getting this one see density of water into volume of water displaced how much if i am putting an uh, 2 gram a uh, 2 centimeter cube of object inside that 2 centimeter cube will of water will be displaced isn't it so volume of water will displaced will be equal to the object volume of object which is immersed in the liquid okay so clear for you so is this an easy chapter yes it's a very easy chapter i felt and usually the children also will be saying you know, the same the same compared to the others because and the, all the equations of motions and now you are thorough with the equations of motion isn't it so in the numericals also you won't feel it as very difficult okay so i hope all of you understood all those things and i'm inviting you for today and if you like the channel please don't forget to subscribe the channel okay so and support me that's uh, for the existence of the channel i require that as a support and please comment it also your whatever your valuable suggestions you can give whichever is required for you see this is mainly for the students okay so whichever is required for you you can uh, and, uh, regarding this subject and or uh, this topic you can send it okay so in the revision time we will be doing the more numericals and all okay so thank you for watching bye